This is one of my favorite quotes, and that's why I have it up here. Um, this is a quote from Sir John A. Macdonald. Um, and this sort of gives you, uh, I know you've probably already read it, but I'm going to read it to you again. Um, it gives you an idea of what was behind the thinking um, of bureaucrats and politicians at the time that the residential schools were formed. When the school is on the reserve, the child lives with the parents who are savages. He is surrounded by savages, and though he may learn to read and write, his habits and training and mode of thought are Indian. He is simply a savage who can read and write. It has been strongly pressed on myself as head of the department that Indian children should be withdrawn as much as possible from the parental influence, and the only way to do that would be to put them in central training industrial schools where they will acquire the habits and the modes and thought of white men. So the last uh, Indian residential school closed in 1996. A lot of the book that I've written leans on the Indian residential school experience because I do believe that um, the federal government is, is, this is true, is still in the business of education. They are still the funders of education. And they also, as well, have been underfunding education for Indigenous kids from the get-go. And that means the playing field has never been leveled. Um, and this deficit is what we're seeing all over the country. This is why also I argue that you're seeing what's happening in Thunder Bay and seeing what's happening all over this nation. This is um, a picture I promised I would show you, or one of them anyway. Um, and this is, uh, shows you sort of the kids at Cecilia Jeffrey Indian Residential School. And why I like this picture is because um, I don't know if Chani's in it was taken at the time that he was there in school. And I, I've been to um, Cecilia Jeffrey, and there's nothing left of it um, anymore. Um, what's there now, it, the building was raised to the ground. Um, it now houses a ground council treaty number three office. So the little, almost like a little blue mobile home that's stuck on the little, little uh, bits of foundation that were left there. And all that's left of Cecilia Jeffrey there is this big black suitcase, plastic suitcase. And inside the big black plastic suitcase are all of these photographs. And when I first saw these pictures, and they were shown to me by um, uh, Grand Council Treaty Number 3 Elder um, Thomas White, when he showed me the pictures, I felt sick. Because all of the photos, with the exception of a very, very few had no names to them whatsoever. And I was looking at hundreds and hundreds of pictures that spanned decades and decades. And I got to tell you, um, I can see a couple kids smiling in this one, but most of the pictures I saw, nobody is smiling. The pictures are pretty devastating. There's some Christmas photos, um, and those ones always kind of get me in the gut too because uh, the kids look pretty well desolate and people are passing around Christmas presents and anyway um, and you have to remember too that these kids are taken from their homes they're taken from their language their culture their clothes and their belongings are taken away from them everything they know is gone so those are the parallels that I do see as well too with kids leaving their home in northern Ontario, and also, too, throughout Canada that have to travel to cities to go to high school because that's kind of the nut of it. Still, in this country, in 2017, we do not have high schools for every child that needs one. That's quite a remarkable thing, you know, when we're talking about reconciliation and, um, and everything else. I do believe um, that uh, a high school education should be the right of every child in this nation, Indigenous or not.